Hi guys, PJ here, back with another PC release, looking at the settings and options available in Miles Morales. Yep, it's the Spider-Man game released yesterday as I record this. Now, this game has been available on PS5 and PS4, you know, quite a long time ago. And before we get into this, I can tell you I've completed this on PS5 and believe it's a very, very good game. In fact, I do actually think the story was better than the original Spider-Man story. So, you know, take that as you will. It's definitely worth the money. It's worth buying. This is the Steam version that I'm testing. We're running this on a GTX 1660. That's a six gigabyte card. And being the TI version, it is a little bit more punchy. No RTX though, guys, and so no ray tracing. We've got a Ryzen 7 1700 CPU, which is a 8-core 16-thread CPU. Nothing's overclocked. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM, and the game is installed on an NVMe drive. We're recording to a separate SSD, and we've got Windows 10 Pro installed on another SSD, so there shouldn't be any lag latency from all the recording software that uh, is used, which, by the way, is the NVIDIA Shadow uh, software. I've played a considerable amount of the game on and off doing different bits and bobs with it and can say even with the settings that the game has chosen which is what you see in front of you right now which is mostly the high settings there is very high but this is mostly high and it's at native res but with a 30% adaptation on the resolution so it can sort of scale up and down to to suit itself I've got vsync turned off and we're definitely getting between 30 and 60 fps now, normally on a lot of games, you'd sort of notice that. You'd feel the judder, you'd feel it spiking up and down. This game feels really smooth. There's no stutter, there's no judder. And it works with the DualShock controller really, really well. So if you've got a PS5 and you've got a DualShock, plug it in and it will use the speaker on it and all the haptics and everything, just like on the original PS5 release. So really worthwhile doing. Mouse keyboard, not too much, guys. It it doesn't play too great on mass keyboard that's an opinion but try it for yourself if you're going to buy it see what you think but without further ado let's have a look at all the settings and options that the game does have available should you want to tweak you know everything the good news is there is an awful lot that you can adjust on this it's not a bare bones stuff it actually supports all your ultra wide monitors various different sound setups etc so it does have a lot of adjustability built into the game now the basic game options are like you'd expect in any you've got difficulty and you've got how much hood you want showing minimap etc turning things on and off as you require if you want to look at any of these in detail obviously pause the video subtitles you've got a lot of good stuff there you've got adjustable size on the subtitles and also color you can change them to be vivid etc which i feel is very nice a lot of volume options unfortunately no 5.1 or 7.1 surround home cinema is strictly 2.1 so it's like a glorified stereo there is mono as well, should you wish. You've got a few other options as well. You can turn the podcasts on and off. Uh, there's a sort of part of the ambience, so the feel of the game. So, you know, unless they're really annoying, I would actually leave them on. They're quite amusing to listen to while you're swinging through the buildings and, uh, you know, going around the city as it were. So, yeah, tend to leave them on, guys. They're, they're okay. They're not intrusive. Or at least play through it a bit before you decide to sort of turn them all on and off, etc. And have a play around with it. But moving on from the audio settings, we are now going to go on to what has to be the biggest one and probably why most of you guys have actually sort of gone onto this video for the display and graphics options. Now I'm running this on a 1440p screen. It's a HDR screen and I've disabled vSync like I was saying. You have got different options for your windowed mode. You can toggle it to windowed if you want to. I was running it full screen. Doesn't seem to have an impact on the performance. So if you look on the left hand side of the screen uh, at the start of this video, you'll have noticed the numbers going up and down. The game uses a good five and a half gigabytes of VRAM. So this is a six gigabyte card and it was using a lot of it. It's also using 10 to 12 gigabytes of normal uh, memory, normal PC uh, memory, which is quite a lot. So uh, you're gonna have to tame it down a bit if you've got a four gigabyte graphics card, that's for sure. It does spread the load as well across the CPU cores. They were all running fairly reasonably, nothing too high, you know, you were sort of 40s 50 percent on each core which is quite nicely spread so it was running very well i was pleased with how it was running on this system because this cpu is now well very old let's face it 
but adjustments you do have the nice AMD FSR in there which is really good you've got adaptive res so in other words it's not going to be a full 1440p it'll adapt depending on the situation so if there's a lot going off and the GPU is starting to struggle it will sense that it will adjust it down so that your, your frame rate stays at least decently high you could set this to be a locked 60 you'd have to dial some stuff down to at least medium such as shadows and things like that personally i think i'd be tempted to either leave vsync off and play it like you saw at the start of this video which was all vsync off and the, you know it was going up and down or lock it to a locked 30 and just enjoy the show as it were this being a non rtx card some of the stuff is locked out yeah now as well as the stuff that's locked out to do with dynamic scaling you've also got hdr locked out grayed out there at the top the reason for this is because hdr is disabled in windows if you enable it in windows it will enable those options in game I'm personally not a fan of the way hdr looks in windows so i always turn it off but if you've got an RTX card, you've also got some more adaptive res you can sort of mess around with and a load more options underneath it as well. Because obviously, you know, the, the game is new, so it uses all the latest technologies. Like I say, unfortunately, my, my 2060 is no longer with me. I do need to get another one to do some more testing with stuff because this game has a ton of ray tracing options that you can see at the bottom there we've got reflection shadows resolution you know everything is there that you could wish for and on the playstation 5 because that's what i've completed it on it makes a difference you can see his reflection in the windows it looks really good so it is a shame to miss out on that to be honest with you as for what you can get the game to run on the lowest i've been able to get the g memory down to the graphics memory is 3.5 gig so really i think we're looking at a four gigabyte card on this no less it's going to really struggle to run on a three gigabyte card i'm not saying it's impossible but you've been warned personally i'd get a four gigabyte or above to run this game look on steam see what people's reviews have put because all people have different cards etc and you'll be able to gauge it for yourself from that your main hits though are going to be as usual shadow quality and screen space reflections they're very heavy hitters on the gpu if you turn those down you'll gain a lot of fps back as for how this compares to the PlayStation 5 version, well, the PS5 is running at mainly high settings, some very high settings, and of course it has ray tracing enabled as well. So you're going to need to be punching more than a 1660 Ti to be able to come anywhere near. The other thing is, of course, that is a 4K, or thereabouts, 4K output on the PlayStation. So I would imagine you're going to be needing something along the lines of a 3070 to hit those type of standards. And obviously a newer CPU than the one that's in this particular machine here. But that's why we have customization. And in fact, when you first load the game, there's a screen comes up to let you adjust all this before you even get into game, which is quite a nice thing. It gives you an idea of what you're going to have to deal with as the game progresses, as you get into the game. I've tried it on cutscenes as well, so like at the very start you have to ride Rhino through the city and he's smashing stuff up. I've never had it drop below 30 FPS on these settings, so if you've got a 1660 Ti, be pretty confident with what the, what the game chooses. High settings seem to work very, very well. But anyway, that's enough of graphic settings, let's have a look at the rest of the settings and options menu available to you in this game. There is one more thing I'll quickly mention actually before moving on and that is chromatic abbreviation there. It's a very Marmite subject, it gives a yellowy blue tinge to the edges of things and we've also got film grain strength. I tend to turn both of those off because I don't want the yellowy blue tinge to everything and I don't want the speckly look from the film grain strength, I want it to look nice and smooth so personal preference turn them all off that's totally up to you and it will not affect the performance of the game on your graphics card which is quite a nice thing you've actually got the option there to not bother about that particular one right we have other options for accessibility and there's an awful lot of them like i said earlier on pause the video if you want to see these in detail um there is a ton of stuff guys if you scroll down you can see yourself there you can have everything from high contrast to icon prompts in different sizes they've gone to town on it your gamepad settings are there because obviously you could run uh, an xbox controller or you know like i was saying a dualshock does work really nice with the game it was designed with that in mind 
One last thing before I wrap this video up, and I believe this deserves a mention because they've gone to town on it. Guys, the game's got a photo mode, and it is very, very good. You can have different spotlights on and off in various colours all around Spider-Man, uh, or Miles if you like. You can have a free cam, you can have a selfie cam, you can change your suit while you're in photo mode, you can have frames, you can have stickers over it, I could go on. It is an excellent bit of kit to play around with, and if you love sharing stuff on social media, this is for you. There's some really good stuff you can do with this. It's well worth spending 15 minutes just having a good old faff around with the photo mode. It, you can get some really interesting shots from it, so I can't big that up enough. I'm glad they've kept it in the PC version. It wasn't the original PlayStation version, so I'm glad it's still there. But guys, that's it. I can wholeheartedly 10 out of 10 recommend the game as a game. I believe it to be excellent. It runs very well on PC. I appreciate you watching this video and hopefully it was helpful to you. Thanks a lot and goodbye for now.